Welcome everyone to day one of the Net Zero for New York Dairy virtual conference presented by Cornell Pro Dairy and Cornell Cooperative Extension. My name is Margaret Quasdorf and I'm the CCE Northwest New York Regional Dairy Management Specialist and I will be your host for today's program. Um, our first presenter is Karen Scanlon. EVP of Environmental Stewardship for Dairy Management Inc. and then Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy. She's joined by a few of her colleagues today, Jill Minata and Michelle Rossman, who may help her answer questions later this afternoon. So Karen will be kicking us off today with her presentation titled U.S. Dairy Net Zero Initiative, Building a Roadmap to 2050. Welcome Karen and take it away. Thank you so much, Margaret. I'm excited to be with you at the start of this amazing program that Cornell has designed. And I wanna be um, right at the first to express my appreciation for the partnership we have with Cornell in helping to build the knowledge, the research and the resources we know dairy farmers need as they consider what works best for their businesses and um, helping to build a brighter future for dairy industry in this important area of environmental stewardship. Uh, on the next slide, um, what this really shows us is that as, as everyone on the call knows, dairy farmers have for generations realized the value and importance of caring for the land. And that's really important today um, because dairy's environmental story is critical to win with consumers who have quickly have a have a quickly increasing list of choices with dairy alternatives. And you'll hear more about this from Sarah Pace later, but it's a critical point. The consumers are bombarded with messages and challenges that, that dairy is terrible for the environment. And um, it's one of the only ways that alternatives can create a point of difference with real dairy because dairy we, wins on taste and enjoyment. So we have to flip this narrative and provide the proof and get people to think differently about dairy and see how dairy is providing climate solutions, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, providing electricity for consumers and renewable natural gas for vehicles and more. So um, on the next slide, we know that this is a, an increasing story um, that we have documented progress in this area. Like you see here, some of the findings of the Capper Katie research study that showed significant gains from 2007 to 2017. But we need to continue to add to that proof through research and action that reinforces dairy's positive environmental position. And that's a lot of what led to, on the next slide, this, um, the goals that the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy announced in April of 2020. So recognize these, these consumer trends, knowing that we have a strong history of stewardship and commitment to the environment in dairy, and also backed by um, what the Innovation Center undertook called a materiality assessment that showed the top social responsibility topics that was important for continuing to build trust uh, in the dairy industry and where dairy is held accountable by our stakeholders. So along all of that information combined with stakeholder input that was collected over 12 to 18 months, all of that contributed to the development of these goals. Um, and they, they are ambitious that by 2050, the goals are uh, collective um, at the field, at the farm and the processor level. And they really speak to the industry's commitment to continue to um, advance its environmental commitments and differentiate itself uh, as a, a solution, not only for people, but for the planet and communities. Uh, on the next slide, you'll see the strategies for reaching the 2050 goals. The 2050 goals on GHG neutrality, water use and water quality. Um, we do have these two strategies. Um, as I mentioned before, um, they are collective goals, the field, farm and processor level. So we have strategies on the processor side, working with a very active group of over 20 organizations that meet regularly and are identifying tools, resources, best practices that can advance that part of the industry in these important areas at the facility level of packaging, waste, water, and greenhouse gas emissions. 
And then at the field and farm level, we have what we call our net zero initiative. And that is a collaborative industry-wide effort that is focused on creating that pathway for all farms to find what works best for them uh, to find solutions to lower greenhouse gas emissions and find the water quality, water uh, quality improvements that are good for their farm and good for the environment. So finding that economic viability and that economic balance to these environmental gains that are, are possible and driven by dairy farms. It's important for us to reflect on um, how the goals in NZI work together and what they are and what they aren't and what they um, do and don't represent. Um, the goals, as, as said a couple of times, are a collective effort. Um, and they and not every farm is doing everything, uh, but it really reflects the movement of the industry in this important area. Uh, and the goals are not short term, they are 30 years out. We know we have a lot of the tools and technologies and some resources today that will help us accelerate progress in the short term, but we don't have all of the answers and we're working um, very hard uh, with um, many partners from research to uh, support services to make sure we continue to drive for solutions and make them available for farms. And that's what's really um, the, the heart of the Net Zero Initiative is recognizing that we have a good start today toward the goals and how important the goals are. But the initiative is about a um, setting out and starting to build that pathway to make sure we have all of the influx of resources and investment needed to support the industry in pursuit of these goals. So the initiative is a strategy uh, to build the industry capacity to pursue these goals and creating a pathway for all farms. Um, it's not a one size fits all effort, but does consider the, the diversity of farming types and size and location across the country. And it's focused on action today, but really focused on building that progress over time and recognizing that, um, as I said before, consumers are increasingly choosing those products that have a lower environmental impact. And we have to be more direct and clear about the environmental sustainability to compete in these markets. And so through Net Zero Initiative, we can document what dairy has been doing and is um, continues to build that progress over time. Uh, another important context I want to set for you are the partners, the many, many partners that are involved uh, in the Net Zero Initiative. This work, this massive um, endeavor is not um, born by farmers alone. And when, when it feels like the, the world is against animal agriculture and dairy specifically, it's great to know that we have such a diverse range of partners and stakeholders that are standing beside dairy farmers uh, on this journey. So while the logos you see here don't really represent um, the complete partnership um, and all of the organizations that touch every aspect of this work, it's, it's a good overview of the the depth and breadth of the kinds of organizations that have been brought into and, and want to be part of this endeavor. Um, the, the logos across the top, though, I want to draw your attention to the Dairy National Leadership, that not only Dairy Management in the Innovation Center, but we're working with four other organizations to really represent that uh, integrated approach across the dairy community that uh, is, is pooling resources, experience, and staff to generate the solutions and build the pathway for the industry on the, um, the path toward these environmental goals. You see we have, uh, in addition, we have corporate and funding partners, NGO partners, research partners, um, including USDA and UC Davis. And I know Dr. Mitloner is following me on this uh, presentation. So um, it's, it's fantastic. Um, to, to have uh, this partnership that we have with both Cornell and UC Davis and many others um, across the country working together on these efforts. And if we think about what are the, the keys to success as we build this pathway that we call the Net Zero Initiative, we characterize it in these ways. 
we have to uh, be addressing affordability. We know we have to have more economically viable solutions in the hands of farmers so that they can continue to and accelerate the way in which they're providing the environmental solutions through their operations, but provide that economic incentive, that economic reward, the, the revenue opportunity that should come with providing these environmental solutions. Um, we also have to close data and research gaps. While we know a lot today, there's more that we need to know and we need to continue to learn and accelerate that learning. And that's an important key to success. And then finally, accessibility, um, that we have to be able to translate what we're learning, both about research, um, about what works well on farms, about what works, um, how we unlock those economic opportunities. We have to have the infrastructure in place to translate that information, get it into the hands of farmers across the country and provide them technical uh, informational support as well as opening up those financial opportunities or financial assistance opportunities as well. So these, um, these are our areas uh, of success. So let me um, now launch into a little bit more about how we have structured the work under the Net Zero Initiative. And it starts here with a, a, an understanding of dairy's environmental footprint. You see that it's um, the, the breakdown here. This is all based on uh, the dairy life cycle assessment. And um, you see the environmental footprint is broken down between feed production, manure, enteric methane, and on-farm energy use uh, and efficiency. And this framework really provides the, the focus areas for how we can drive for progress against greenhouse gas uh, neutrality, as well as water use and water quality. So this provides that frame for identifying and pursuing research priorities, as well as identifying uh, where we can find the environmental improvements as well as economic opportunities. And it also helps us identify how we can increase the accessibility, the access to tools and resources that farmers need or are missing today and where we need to fill those gaps. So it's really an organizing frame for us um, where we're grounded in science and grounded in um, importance of where we need to focus our efforts and leverage uh, not only um, check off focus of, of dollars and resources, but our partnership efforts as well. So getting a, a little more into the keys to success and um, this framing, um, focusing first on where we have our research focus. Um, we are um, expanding research projects to improve our data and knowledge in feed production and in all of these areas. And we have underway right now, if we could go to the next slide, please, um, some specific projects on um, feed production, and that is our dairy soil and water regeneration project. And um, we're privileged to have the partnership of Corinne Kettering from Cornell, um, and she's on the agenda later in this, in this program tomorrow. Um, she's um, actually a key partner with us on the Dairy Soil and Water Regeneration Project, and that's uh, a focus on soil health and how actions um, to improve soil health in production of dairy feed crops can reduce greenhouse gas, improve water quality, and enable some economic benefits. We also have a newly launched project called Greener Cattle Initiative that um, has received some major partner funding as well. Uh, and that's going to uncover more commercially viable solutions for addressing and reducing enteric methane emissions. So just a, a couple of snapshots of some of the key um, five year plus research efforts that we have with partner support that are uncovering um, and closing some of those important research gaps. We also have a focus on on-farm and sector-wide me measurement strategies so that we're better equipping farmers to have the information and tools they need to make informed decisions about um, new practices or technologies they want to consider for their operations, as well as how we measure uh, incredibly track progress for the entire industry uh, as we make progress toward the goals. 
So that's a key focus of us for that our team has as well. And then the last bullet is about developing this roadmap of how we are making the incremental progress toward the 2050 goals. And that's some work underway as well. And we're excited to share that um, as that develops later on uh, this year. Um, the, this next slide is, is highlighting a specific effort that we have. It's, it's a pilot program where we want to um, partnering with commercially operating dairies uh, and installing a suite, a comprehensive suite of technologies and practices where we can document the uh, environmental improvements that, that happen on a farm with the economic um, value that should be generated from those environmental gains. So it's a small number of farms in a pilot setting, really consider these learning laboratories with the intention of um, working through a pilot situation so that we can learn as much as we can from the small number of farms, but share that out so that the entire industry benefits from what is learned on these farms. So we're expecting to learn how we can better validate the environmental gains that dairy farmers are making through their actions and choices on their farm, learn more about new technologies uh, and do some real world uh, implementation of these new technologies and find out how they work best. That profit and loss modeling, again, that, that critical economic piece we have to learn in a, this pilot setting and it really provides a, a great um, learning opportunity for us that we can share out in the entire industry benefits from. And then uh, um, as we document these environmental gains of sequestering carbon or reducing greenhouse gas emissions, addressing enteric, and we can document that through these settings, we're better enabling uh, all of dairy farmers who do those same actions and can document those same gains to enter into the ecosystem service markets as, as they continue to develop and open up more um, opportunities for, for farms. So these great learning laboratories um, are present a, a good opportunity for us to work with partners uh, and answer some of the key questions that farms and dairy companies have. Um, so that this is a great opportunity uh, for that concentrated learning that then can be shared out. So that broad sharing of information is the focus of this third area that I wanted to make sure we talked about. We call it collective impact. And it's um, the focus is driving that increasing or driving the ability to, uh, for many farmers to, to voluntarily adopt these sustainable practices and technologies. And our focus is ensuring that farms of all sizes, types, and locations have that ability to find what works for them and uh, increase their voluntary adoption of these solutions. And really harnessing the power of what dairy farmers have been and are doing. So um, you'll see a number of our tactics here um, that, that we're employing in this space to demonstration projects where we are bringing um, supply chain partners together to create more information, technical and financial assistance to um, scale up adoption of practices that we know work. Um, we're conducting an inventory uh, of what farmers are already doing so we can do more celebration of what farmers are currently doing today, as well as identify where there's a lack of resources to support um, proven practice adoption. Um, it's about building success stories that feed our ability to demonstrate the difference that dairy is making and recognize the individual and collective efforts that are happening across the country. So look, making sure we have the, the infrastructure and the support throughout dairy uh, to, to support that broad voluntary farmer adoption. Um, and so on the next slide, um, we know that resources are important, that uh, as I said on the previous page, that we're going to see that voluntary adoption when we are equipping farmers with the resources they need. And, you know, there are um, that sharing of, of support happens best at the local level um, by working with extension by working with uh, field offices of conservation districts or NRCS or local watershed groups, everyone 
in your your local community has um, those resources uh, at your disposal. So what we can do is to make sure that that uh, they have the best information um, that we're that they have exposure to the research that we're driving for and have the updated resources at their fingertips. Um, and then there's there's more information that's available um, at the national uh, level as well too. What we've highlighted here is um, some resources available through National Milk Producers Federation and the Farm Environmental Stewardship Program. Uh, there's a, a user guide for the Farm Environmental Stewardship Tool, which is available to cooperatives, and processors, and farmers today for assessing where they are. Um, they can get a snapshot of a greenhouse gas footprint today and energy efficiency. So that's a great tool available to farmers today that will be evolving to provide greater support in the near future. Um, and then there's uh, uh, this resources guide on the right-hand side. It's kind of a checklist to see what am I already doing today and what can I think about uh, for new actions I can take in the future uh, and provides a good starting off point to have a conversation with your, with your local experts that can help you customize those approaches. And then on the left-hand side, Nutrient is um, Nutrient is a is a company that also offers many services. Has an online open source catalog with information about manure management technologies and many other practices. And they also offer a series of webinars and other resources that really help farmers to evaluate options and make decisions. Uh, on, the, on the next slide, it's just a reminder of why we're doing this, kind of circling back to my comments at the beginning that um, we know dairy farming has a history of great stewardship and providing services for the greater community uh, that we're a part of. And we want to, that we give consumers the confidence to continue to enjoy the dairy products that they love. Um, in addition to providing nutritious milk and dairy products, we bring these wide, um, tremendous benefits to the community at large. So it's, it's a great reminder of us that we have this fantastic story to tell. So what does success look like as, um, as we implement the Net Zero Initiative in, in pursuit of these environmental goals? So we know we accomplish what we're setting out to do when farmers are enabled through tools, insights, and access to information and peers, when farmers are able to diversify their income beyond the milk that they sell, and when we're able to measure and report on progress that further demonstrates dairy's leadership, and when consumers are even more confident about their support and purchase of dairy products. And so how, um, what Checkoff does, what DMI does, is that we can really put our promotion power behind all of this research and this action and really demonstrate dairy's leadership as an essential and sustainable food source. So we leverage the proof through the science and through the actions that dairy farmers take every day. And we leverage that proof to, um, to we leverage that proof and we leverage the partnerships that we have and we leverage the information that we generate to influence and inform um, thought leaders and media and consumers. And all of this is our equation for um, building trust and increasing demand and support for dairy. So I wanna thank the Cornell team for pulling together this program that has brought us together to have this conversation. And the, the program that you've developed will really unpack the detail behind the areas of feed production and enteric and manure and that's gonna highlight the ways that farmers can take action today and in the future. We're thrilled to be part of this program with Cornell and we look forward to the future we're building together. Thank you.